And so now we have to go into depth with this whole epigenics. And if you don't know what epigenics is, it's actually the study of how trauma, emotional environment and lifestyle choices can affect gene expression without actually changing the DNA sequence. So in other words, your family's sin and suffering can be mark your biology without defining it permanently. So I'll give you an example of this. A child may inherit like methylation patterns or histone modifications that prime them for heightened sensitivity to certain emotional, addictive, or even sexual behaviors. But this doesn't identify them. It's just an influence. So it's not their identity, it's an influence. So someone that's prone to depression or someone who's prone to, you know, um, addictive behavior, they are predisposed to that. But again, it's not their identity. But see, the Bible already speaks of this. It already had language for this type of stuff that we're researching long before labs did. It says, behold, I was shapen into iniquity and sin did my mother conceive me. That's in Psalms 51 and 5. The word shapen in Hebrew is cholu, literally meaning to be twisted, wounded, or brought forth in painful process. So you were formed under the influence of sin, but you're not defined by it. That's the key. You were shaped and formed, but not defined by it. 